C sharp job system is one of the main parts of Unity Dots. Using jobs, you can multi thread the C sharp code to make your games even 10 times more performant. To start, we'll need few packages. First one is the collections package, which in newer versions of Unity is already containing the jobs package. The second package is the mathematics package, which will allow us to use some mathematical functions and data types such as vector2. And if you want to achieve even greater performance, you should download the burst package. In my project, I have just an empty script and a empty scene with empty object on which I have the script. And now we'll take a look at how we can create our first job. Job works kind of like a function. You can give it some input and also output parameters. The way to do it is a bit different, but it has a lot similar with functions. So we can just call the job and execute it. But the main part of jobs is that it is automatically managing the threads for you. So you don't need to decide on which of the threads you will be running it. You can just schedule the job and everything is happening automatically in the background. To the script, I will just add using unity.mathematics, unity.jobs, collections and burst. I usually like to create the jobs outside of the mono behavior class. So I will make it public. The data type is a struct because the technology stack is data oriented and then just give it some name and make it inherit from I job. It is really that simple. In it, we also need to add public void execute in which everything that we want to happen in the job will be happening. So just like that, we have created a job and in it, you can do anything you want. I will just do some mathematical operation. Once we have the job created, we can just initialize it and then schedule it. So let's say in our update void, I will create new variable of the type my job one and I will just create a new job. So this is the basic way to create a job and schedule it. Sometimes you may want to pause the main thread until the job finishes so that you can get some output data from it. So we can just access the job handle of the job and then on it we can call the function complete so that it is going to wait until the job is completed. This obviously is going to get rid of the multi-threading but for this example I just want to show you how long it takes for the job to complete and how long it takes it to complete without the job. I have just added a boolean if we want to use the jobs, if we want, I have the code that we have created and if we don't want to use the jobs, I have just the same stuff that is in the job but in the main update function. If you are thinking that there will be some huge performance difference, there won't be because we are just calling one job in the update so it is pretty much the same as just calling all of it in update and we are also making the main thread wait using the complete function until the job finishes. So right now, as we are not using jobs, we are at 300 frames per second. And when we use jobs, it is really the same. Now I have jobs turned on and we can take a look into the profiler. And when I take a look into the CPU usage, on the main thread, we can see the update part, which is where the mathematic function is happening. And when I turn on jobs, we can see that the update part is still happening on the main thread because it is waiting for the job to finish. But as we take a look under the jobs, we can see that under the worker 2, which is just the second core, there is running the second job. So if we would run many of these jobs, they would get split up across all of these cores and it would be a lot faster. So how can we use jobs to actually make our game faster? Well, we can just call the function many times such as it would be happening with some enemy AI, because at one time we may have hundreds of enemies being spawned, so all of these calculations would be happening at the same time. So here I'm just calling the job and also the function 10 times, but with the job we don't want to just schedule it once and then wait until it completes, because again this wouldn't work with the multi-threading. What we want to do instead is schedule all of the jobs and wait until they all get finished. And to do that, I'm first creating native list, which is the part of unity.collections, to create just list for all of the handles. Then I'm just scheduling the jobs as I did it before, and I'm adding the handle into the list, and I'm calling the function complete all on the handles. 
And to make sure that the native list is not still just lying in the memory because native lists work different than just classic lists, we also need to call the dispose function on it. Otherwise, if we wouldn't call it, we would have memory leaks. And when creating the native list, we also can't forget to specify the allocator to make sure that it stays in the memory at least for some time. Now, without jobs, we are getting around 200 frames per second and with jobs, we are getting around 300 frames per second, which definitely is an increase. And when we take a look into the profiler without the jobs, we can see that it is all happening just on the main thread. On the workers, there is nothing happening. But when we turn on jobs, we can see that all of the jobs get split up between these workers. So we can see my job one, my job one. So the multi-threading is really working. To make our code even more optimized, we can use burst. And to use it, it is really simple. Before the job, we just need to add attribute burst compile. Just like that. And you also want to make sure that when you go back to Unity, you go to jobs, burst, and you have enabled the compilation. And with burst, we are getting about 40 frames per second, pretty much for free. The increase in performance is going to depend on the scenario where you use it. In my another example, with jobs, we are at about, again, 350 frames per second. And without it, we go down to 30 frames per second, which really is 10 times better. In the second example, instead of having it all in one script, I have just put the same script on multiple objects so that we can really use the multithreading. This script is pretty much the same. We still have just some mathematical function, which is doing some square root, adding it to a value and then returning some input value plus the value that it gets from the square root so that we also have the input. How do we add it? It is really simple. To the job, we just need to add a public variable and then when creating the job into the curly brackets, we can also define that variable. Next thing I will add is output for the job. So you may be thinking that you can again do public float and then just get it once you create the job, but it doesn't work that way. You need to store it in a native array. So in this case, I will just define a native array with type float. And then once I have the output, I will just set it to the first index in the native array. And when creating the job, I will also create the array. So the type is again float and I'm initializing it just with one value and passing it into the job. And now using debug.log, we can easily get the output on the first index, just like that. So when you want to have some output, you always need to create native array for that. And again, because it is native array, don't forget to dispose it. And because we are using the output native array in the job, the allocator should be temp job. And so that we can debug that log the output, we first need to make sure that the job is completed. So on the handle, we can just call the completed function. And now we can see that all of these jobs that are running are debugging us the output. And each time it is a bit different because I'm using the input as a random value. Till now, we have been using just the classic iJob interface, but there are also a few more, such as the iJob parallel 4, which is usually used with lists. So in this case, I'm spawning many cubes, I'm storing all of their transforms in a list, and then I just want to go through all of these transforms and change their positions. So that's why I'm using this job. So the way to create the job is really the same into the execute function. We also need to pass in integer as a index, but you don't really need to do anything with this. The job will already take care of it for us. So on start, I'm just creating some arrays containing all of the directions and movement speed of these cubes. Then in the for loop, I'm instantiating all of these cubes at some position and I'm setting random direction and movement speed. Then in update, if we are using jobs, I'm first going through all of the transforms and just adding the positions again into native array. This time the type is not vector free, but float free because we want to use it with the job. The float free is really the same as vector free. Then I'm creating new job and passing in all of the arguments, the position, delta time, move speed and the directions. And I'm just scheduling the job. The way to schedule the job is a bit different. First, we need to pass in the total amount of iterations based on the size of the list and then on how big basically one job should be. So right now, if I have 1000 objects in the list, and I have set the inner loop batch count to 100, it will create 10 jobs. And once the job is completed, 
I'm just going through all of the objects again and assigning the new position. And when we play it, we can see that all of the cubes will spawn in the middle and start moving in random directions. And this is all for this jobs tutorial. I hope this video was useful. If you have any questions or suggestions, drop them down to the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in next videos. Bye! Thanks for watching this video till the end. If you are looking for a Unity, C Sharp or Bolt tutor, then I am here for you, so feel free to send me a message to my Gmail and take a look at my website for more info. I can help you with your personal projects or teach you anything about game development you would want to know. You are welcome.